The Legend of Zelda series is awesome. I know it, you know it, fucking John Travolta knows it, everyone knows it. There have been 17 entries to the series and each one is special in its own right. The original Legend of Zelda for the NES showed us how much fun exploration could be in video games. Ocarina of Time led Zelda into the 3D realm, changing the series forever. Majora's Mask and Wind Waker showed us that straying from typical Zelda conventions could still lead to amazing results. And A Link to the Past showed us, um, it, it showed us that, um, I mean, it showed us a lot of stuff that I totally know about because I've definitely played the game. <sighs> Shh, I've never played A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past is not just seen as one of the greatest Zelda games of all time, but as one of the greatest games of all time. I've noticed that people born after 1990 typically view Ocarina of Time as a gift from the heavens that not only defines Zelda, but what all games should strive to be. While people born before 1990 think that that is a crock of shit because A Link to the Past is the crowning accomplishment in the series. Falling in the first category, I didn't have a ton of interest in playing A Link to the Past. It is one of my greater gaming sins. The weirdest part is I've beaten every other Zelda game. That includes Zelda 2, which just fuck. Just fuck. Hell, I've even beaten A Link Between Worlds, which is based off of A Link to the Past. I've been meaning to get around to it for a while, and now I have no more excuses, so let's do it. After starting off the game, a cutscene plays that explains the basic premise of the plot. Already, there is way more information and detail than in the first two games, which pretty much just said, get the Triforce and save Zelda. A Link to the Past tells you some backstory of Hyrule, shows you actual visuals of the backstory, and then tells you to save Zelda, because some things never change. You wake up, go to the castle, find your dead uncle, save Zelda, and start your quest to get the Master Sword. I could go in depth about the story, but the game's fucking 20 years old, and I imagine everyone already knows it. After playing it for five minutes, it feels pretty Zelda-ish. It's good that every 2D Zelda that came out after A Link to the Past was heavily influenced by it. Movement, swordplay, and enemy actions felt really familiar to me even though I had never played this game before. Aside from the gameplay, I quickly realized a lot of things that are staples in the Zelda franchise originated from A Link to the Past. The first thing I noticed was the music. Kakariko Village's theme and Zelda's lullaby appear, along with the Master Sword theme. Being the Ocarina of Time scrub that I am, I always assume that those songs originated from Ocarina because I'm dumb. There are many other things that got started here too. For instance, this is the first appearance of the Master Sword, which is one of the most recognizable things in the series. It also introduces to cuckoos that will ruin your shit, capturing fairies in bottles, the hookshot, the ocarina, the sages, Link having pink hair. Scratch that last one, that last one is not right. It also introduced a theme that I'll call the Dual Worlds theme. In A Link to the Past, you gain access to the Dark World, a parallel dimension to Hyrule created by Ganon. Switching between the worlds allows you to access different parts of the map, which makes it possible to progress through the game and unlock various secrets. This premise is rampant in the series. It can be seen in the Oracle games with transporting between past and present and ages and through different seasons and seasons. It can also be seen in Twilight Princess when switching between the Twilight Realm and the Normal Realm. It can be seen in the Minish Cat when you change sizes. Skyward Sword has different puzzles where you have to manipulate time in certain areas to solve them. And even Ocarina of Time has you switch between Young Link and Adult Link to access different parts of Hyrule and explore it in new ways. It allows the developers to utilize various assets and keep the world a manageable size while still having a ton to explore. Another convention that started in A Link to the Past is that Zelda actually does stuff. I mean, some stuff. She's no Sheik or Tetra, but at least she isn't Sleeping Beauty anymore, most of the time. She talks and gives advice, but still feels very much like a damsel in distress. While some might argue that Zelda is a damsel in distress in every game, I feel like Nintendo has empowered her and given her more depth in each passing title. The difference between how Zelda is portrayed now and how she was portrayed in A Link to the Past is pretty huge, but with that said, A Link to the Past at least makes her feel less like a goal that has to be reached, more like a person that Link actually cares about. Along with Zelda being more prevalent, so are other characters, as in there are actually other characters. Sure, Zelda 1 had Old Man and Zelda 2 had Bagu and townsfolk who look exactly the same but are different colors, but A Link to the Past has a ton of new characters that you actually have somewhat meaningful interactions with. It's important because the whole point of the game is to save people, and if you don't care about the people you're saving, then why bother? Having more characters that Link is connected to makes you feel like this is your world and your people that you need to save. It takes away a lot of the emptiness that existed in the earlier titles. This trend of appealing to players' sense of emotion by having Link interact and care about people has grown in every release since A Link to the Past. It is one of the many reasons that so many people are immersed in the Zelda franchise. It gives direction and motivation, which this game has a lot of. 
As a whole, the game made a lot more sense than the previous two titles. Figuring out certain paths and how to progress challenged me, but rarely infuriated me like the original Legend of Zelda. The only part I got remotely frustrated with was figuring out how to find the Ether Medallion to open the Swamp Dungeon and the Quake Medallion to open up Turtle Rock. There isn't a lot of direction on where to find them, and you kind of just have to stumble upon where they are by exploring the world. At the time, figuring out where to find these medallions pissed me off, but looking back now, I kind of realized that's the point. These medallions are needed to open two of the later dungeons in the game, and it seems like the developer's way of saying, explore the fucking world before the game is over. Exploration is a huge part of the series, so while I would have liked to have a little more direction on how to find the medallions, I can appreciate why they didn't put it in. For me, the most difficult part of the game was combat. Fighting in A Link to the Past is straightforward, but fucking hard. Especially in the dark world, enemies rinse through your health, so you have to be really careful when battling. Getting all four bottles becomes extremely important if you don't want to restart all the time. Obtaining the blue and red armor, which lessens the amount of damage you take, helps, but it didn't stop me from dying a shit ton. While enemies and bosses were hard, everything did feel fair. When I died, it was usually my fault, and that's okay. Trial and error are big parts of A Link to the Past. Figuring out the best way to dispose of an enemy or a boss takes experimentation, which is why figuring these things out is so satisfying. Well, now that I've beaten all the dungeons, it's time to face Ganon. Over the years, I have fought Ganon many times, but none of those fights made me half as furious as this one did. It really isn't that hard, especially if you have fairies in the red tunic, but there is a point where he creates holes around the outer edge of the chamber, which you can fall down. If that happens, then you have to start the whole entire fight over. I imagine players that are better than myself didn't have a lot of trouble with not falling down the holes, but I did. I had a lot of trouble with not falling down the holes. <sighs> I will say though that having all this built up frustration made beating him feel that much better. A Link to the Past is a really good game, but if I'm being honest, there are a lot of Zelda games that I enjoyed playing more. It fell somewhere in the middle for me. With that said, I appreciate it for what it did for the franchise. It set up a lot of the mythos and themes that are prevalent in the series. As far as what makes Zelda games Zelda games, the things introduced in A Link to the Past have as much if not more to do with it than any other game in the series. The only other games that come close are the original because it's the fucking original and Ocarina of Time because of the transition into a 3D world. A Link to the Past is a classic. It should be honored, cherished, and remembered as the game that led the Zelda series into greatness. Yeah, it's not my favorite, but I'm still happy to say that I've beaten A Link to the Past. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, then make sure you hit subscribe because more stuff like it is on the way. Also, check out my other videos. The two here are both top 10 lists about some obscure shit that doesn't really matter, but fuck it, click it anyway. Thanks!